Aren't you thankful for what you feel this morning? Aren't you thankful that there is a God that sees and knows exactly what you have need of? Hallelujah! What an awesome God today. I can think of no better way to step out of 2023 and launch into 2024 than believing God for great things and saying, Lord, I believe in you for revival on a scale I've never seen it. I believe in you for miracles on a level I've never known it. I believe this coming year. The Lord said, if you believe, all things are possible. I believe he's a healer. I believe he's a miracle worker. And I claim the anointing of God. So good to be here again. So good to be at CLC. So good to be with each and every one today. Thankful. Thankful for a power and a presence of God. Regardless of what the news is declaring, regardless of what the day or the week this past week has been, when you walk into his house, and you begin to lift him up. He said, I'll draw all men unto me. And can I just tell you this morning, when you get close enough to Jesus, you begin to touch him, and he begins to pour out things. When you get close enough to Jesus, he begins to speak to us like he did Moses. Hey, take off your shoes, Moses. The place where you're on is holy ground. I believe God's drawing us closer to do great and wonderful things today. Amen. So good again to be here, to be with each and every one, to be with Brother and Sister Chance and their family. I, I, am, I was sitting there thinking earlier, I, I'm thankful for our, our friendship through the years. and In fact, I remember one such occasion some time ago, we were, we were going golfing, Brother Chance, Brother G, Chance, and myself, and, and Brother Danny Chance had a brand new driver, <laughs> and man, that thing was pretty, and he hit, he hit that ball, and it was, it was awesome. It was great. When we got back to the car, he just kind of hit the club on the tire of the, <laughs> on the, tire of, of the cart, and Something happened. The club head came off, and it flew down the fairway, and that club head broke, went further than his golf ball did. And I just got to tell you, Brother G. Chance and me, we couldn't hold it in. Some things are just funny, and you got to laugh. And we just paused a while, and I, I may have even fell out of the cart laughing. I, I mean... You know, those are, those are things that you remember. And life is all about those special moments. Amen. And I am thankful and I believe that today is going to be a moment like that. A moment that we won't forget. Well, it was in the middle of December. Everybody's thinking about Christmas. We're just days away from Christmas. But on that Sunday morning, the power of God just came in. I believe God can do anything at any time for anyone, anywhere. Amen. When the angel of the Lord gave the apostle Paul the word that he would make it to the island of Melita, the storm you're at Cleden, with its winds of destruction that was against him immediately lost its strength to destroy. The ship that was taking Paul to prison and his ultimate fate lost its determined course because a word had been given. When the word was given to the apostle Paul, the soldiers 
who were under orders to keep him bound and silence him, they lost their grit. And when God gave Paul a word, the poisonous viper that attacked him lost its venom. Can I tell somebody this morning, when God makes a promise, the very nature of every possible obstacle is transformed to fall in line with your word from God. Because the Bible tells us no weapon that is formed against you can prosper. All of these weapons were formed against Paul and each one of them was dismantled, disengaged, interrupted, and re-aimed by the power of a word unto the apostle. You may get wet. You may have to swim a little. You may get threatened. And when you lay your hands on some, their fangs may come out. But you will have the word of God come to pass that was promised unto you when you believe. I believe today. If you've got your Bibles today, turn with me to the book of Acts. And if it's all right with you, I'll be very short and sweet and to the point if, if, if possible. Let, let me just disclaimer that I'm going to do my best to be short and sweet and to the point. But Acts chapter 4, verse 29 through 30. If you've got that today, turn Acts chapter 4, verse 29 and verse 30. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. I want to preach for a few moments today upon the subject, when prayer happens. When prayer happens. God bless you. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. It was May of 1940. Hundreds of thousands of French and British troops were surrounded and cut off by Hitler, who had tens of thousands of troops and battalions of tank divisions perfectly positioned to bring about the Allied forces' defeat and ultimately sway the course of the war in their favor in what was called a blitzkrieg attack. The attack was so planned and so perfectly positioned by the enemy that Winston Churchill declared, I have no confidence that we can get any of the Allied troops rescued. I'm afraid their fate has been sealed by enemy forces. Churchill also knew if this battle was won by the Germans, it would not only assure their victory for that battle, but it would literally change the course of the entire war. But there was this man named Reese Howells. He was the founder of the Bible College of Wales, and he was widely known and highly regarded in his day as a man of great prayer and great faith. Upon hearing the news of the impending battle with the enemy's expected victory and the staggering potential of the loss of life, he gathered all the college students in an emergency all-night prayer meeting and began to seek God for a divine intervention that somehow the German tanks 
would be stopped unbeknownst to him at the same time tens of thousands of people would gather in churches all across Europe because King George had ordered a national day of prayer because it seemed like the tide was turning in a direction it didn't need to go. There was this declaration. This cannot be a coincidence. This must surely be a divine timing and the beginning of a divine intervention. For in the middle of Hitler's advancing blitzkrieg, with literally no one able to stop the inevitable German victory, Hitler, shockingly and against all his advisor's counsel, ordered his tanks to an immediate and complete stop. Historians to this day can't explain why, but this pause gave the Allied troops just enough time to retreat back to Dunkirk. And while this was going on, a dense fog came out of nowhere and descended upon the airstrips and rendered the German airstrikes ineffective and grounded. And then laymen and women and common citizens began volunteering their private boats to help the Allied forces retreat to safety. And history tells us, while this was going on, the normal choppy waters of the English Channel was said to be like bathwater that day. This, again, was no coincidence, but somebody had been praying for a divine intervention. And because of this, 300,000 men were rescued that day from certain defeat and certain death. And even Churchill declared this, albeit I may not be a religious man, but this is without doubt a miracle. Can I tell you this morning, we must always remember, regardless of how it looks, regardless of what it feels like, and regardless of what the enemy has planned, God answers on behalf of our prayer. Regardless of the scale of our problem. God is not motivated by our problem, but he is motivated by our prayer. I feel today, hell is afraid that somebody in this house right now will stop looking at the problem and just start calling out to God in prayer. I feel like hell is worried if they begin to pray. There's nothing we can do. If they begin to pray, there's no way we can stop them. Somebody say it with me. Prayer changes things. But not only does prayer change things, prayer changes us. It's true, prayer will change things around you. But there are times when your prayers change you. The Bible tells us the apostles were in the will of God in the boat with the storm all around them and fear upon them. And the storm hadn't dissipated. The rain hadn't stopped falling. The wind hadn't stopped blowing. And the waves hadn't stopped crashing. When in the middle of it all, Simon Peter stood up and began to talk to the Lord. Hear me this morning. The enemy becomes terrified 
when you begin to pray and you begin to talk to God because even hell knows things change when people begin to pray. More important than what was happening around Simon Peter was what began happening inside Simon Peter. When Simon Peter began talking to God, it released a reckless faith in him and it positioned him for a miracle on a scale no one could have imagined. Simon Peter, you need to sit down, man. You're a little out of control. No, I'm talking to the master. And he stood up, and the Bible says he went to the edge of the boat. When he began speaking to the Lord, this opened the door for things to begin to take place that no one thought could ever happen. Can I ask you this morning, what is possible for God to do? He can do anything, but the thing that moves him and motivates him is in the middle of problems. We don't hold it back, but we begin to talk to him, Lord, if this is you. Lord, he's just having a little one-on-one prayer meeting with Jesus. Lord, if this is you, then bid me to come. I'm telling you, when you pray, You can get put into a realm of faith that you didn't walk in there initially feeling. When you begin to talk to God, you can be elevated to a place where you didn't walk in there initially understanding. The apostle Peter, at the end of that boat, the edge of that boat, what provoked him to ask Lord, if it be you, bid me come. You've lost your ever-loving mind. Nobody can walk on water. There's no one that can walk on water. Lord, I don't care what I'm even telling myself. I don't care what anybody else in this boat is thinking or doing or not doing. I just want to know, if this is you, then bid me come. When he began to talk to God, it opened the door for him to do things he never thought was initially possible. I believe as we say goodbye to 2023 and we step faithfully and expectantly into 2024, I believe God is saying, I can do anything. I can do all things. With me, all things are possible. Is there anybody that'll begin to pray? Is it possible today? That as we come to the close of this year, God hasn't forgotten where we are. God hasn't forgotten what we're going through. But if when we begin to pray, we find when we begin to pray, in reality, we're positioned for victories and miracles on a scale we couldn't even begin to imagine in 2024. Acts chapter 4, the Bible tells us the disciples were threatened and warned not to speak or preach in the name of Jesus. Read that account. The Bible goes on and it says they didn't go to the Lord simply pleading, Lord, change this this thing that's against us. Lord, change our circumstances. Change the climate of what's going on around us. They they didn't pray that. But in Acts 4 and 29, they asked the Lord, they said, Lord, grant unto us thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word. 
I don't have to wait for the victory to start praying for the victory. I don't have to start praying for the healing for, for, for the doctor to say, you've got your healing. But in the middle of sickness, in the middle of storm, in the middle of problem, I can begin to speak with a godly expectation and boldness. Lord, I believe. They understood what was against them but their attitude was this Lord don't just change our circumstances but change us to pray and to speak with a boldness and a faith can I tell someone this morning for things to get better now this ain't rocket science so if you're waiting on some revelatory powerful word this is, this is about as good as it's going to get. For things to get better, all you've got to do is begin to pray. Matthew 6 and 28, Jesus asked us, consider the lilies. How they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. They literally grow where they're planted. They don't have to be transplanted to survive. They literally have the ability to adapt to whatever their environment may be. Many refuse to grow where they're placed and because of that, they never take root anywhere. Instead, we want to be planted in better circumstances, better situations. In fact, one man said it like this, I found the problem and it is I. But if we go to God in prayer, we become like that tree that is planted by the water. We become rooted and grounded. And when the wind blows, I'm still here. When the enemy attacks, I'm still here. When problems arise, I'm still here. Why? When prayer happens. You see, it's, it's not so important what happens to us as it is important what happens in us. Now, I, I told you I was going to be, be as, 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 as quick as I can, but I, I want to I bring us to this understanding. The Bible says Samson found himself imprisoned and blinded by the enemy. His circumstances were far from ideal. His surroundings were far worse than he could have ever initially imagined. And he was surrounded by more enemy than he could even understand. But it wasn't so much about what the enemy had done to him, so much as what the power of prayer could do within him and through him, he spoke to the, to the young man and he said, son, I want you to take me to the pillars of the building. But, but don't you understand you're a prisoner? All I need you to do is take me to the pillars. But don't you understand that you've been locked up, you've been chained, you've been shamed, and you are in prison? Just take me to the pillars. Don't you know that, that you don't have your eyesight anymore and you can't see what you're really up against? Just take me to the pillars. You see, it didn't matter what was against him. It didn't matter what had been done to him. What surrounded him, the only thing that mattered was not who all was against him, but the only thing that mattered was he began to pray. 
after all the enemy had taken from him, all that needed to happen for God's power to be poured out was pray. Samson, all you got to do is begin to pray. The enemy thought Samson's done. He's no longer a threat. He'll never bother us again. We've got him right where we want him. Yet, even in the very presence of his enemies, all you got to do is begin to pray. And when he began to pray, what the devil thought was dead, what the devil thought was over with, God infused him with an anointing. Psalms 23, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Read that. The reason a banquet table with an opportunity to feast was even made available was because of the power of prayer to change anything or anyone at any time. Samson, you may not be able to see right now, but the power of prayer can restore all that the enemy has taken from you. Yeah, he had made some wrong choices. Yes, he'd suffer consequences beyond his imagination. Yes, it seemed the enemy even had the upper hand. But when Samson began to pray, all that had been taken from him was restored to him. You know what hell's afraid of this morning? If they ever take their eyes off of the enemy, if they ever take their eyes off of the problem and they begin to lift up their hands or they begin to lift up their voice or they begin to bow their knee, all things are possible. You see, hell thinks it like this, and I'm closed, and then come to the music. Hell thinks when somebody's been beat up, knocked around, left for dead, they're worthless, they're of no value, and of no concern. But God is listening. And no matter what you've been through or how many times you've messed up, or how many times you've been beaten and left for dead. There is power when you begin to pray. I'm of the opinion if hell had known what was about to happen, they would have never let Samson pray. So we stand to our feet today. You may not know it. You may be like the man at the pool when Jesus comes to him for a miracle. The first thing he says was the reasons why he can't have or he hasn't obtained his miracle. Well, Lord, I, I, I want it, but I, I can't because other people beat me there. Maybe today... God wants you to know, hey, I see all. I know all. I know you better than you know yourself. But hell doesn't want you to understand. All you've got to do is pray. And watch God through you do the impossible. With every eye closed and every heart open in this house. As we're inching ever closer to the end of 2023 and launching into 2024. 
I don't know what you walked in here struggling with. I don't know what you walked in here wrestling. I don't know what you walked in here that the devil's got hanging over your head. Trying to keep you bound by your yesterday because he's afraid of your tomorrow. Hear me today. God is saying, my ear is inclined to hear. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how much the enemy has positioned himself against you. I don't care how big the storm may be. I'm listening for you to begin to reach out to me. I'm listening for you to begin to call out to me. For when prayer happens, anything is possible. And on this Sunday morning, if you're in this place and you need a miracle today, you, you, you desire a touch of God in your life this morning. Maybe you need the arms of a loving Savior to wrap around you. Maybe you need your God to make a way where there doesn't right now even seem to be a way. When you begin to pray, God begins to move. These altars are open this morning. If you're hungry for a touch of God, if you desire God to do great things in the coming days, in the next year, you've got the power to release Him through your prayer. As they began to sing this morning, I want you to step out. You, you, you don't have to make an exhibit of yourself. Just, just come down, Lord. I'm praying and I'm believing. Lord, I need a divine intervention. You will never fail. Hallelujah. The storm hasn't distracted him. The enemy hasn't persuaded him. Your prayer has moved him. In the name of Jesus. You want to pray in your pew? I encourage you today, all across the house, let's just begin to release God into our situation. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Nothing's too big for God. Nothing's too big for Him today. Hallelujah. I trust you. I believe you. I claim it, Lord.